you take your grab your lead wrist you get in your golf posture and here I'm demonstrating I want you to push your hips back notice how I'm pushing my hips back as I bend for my waist I want to be able to touch the top of my right knee from from my setup position that's how I know if I'm in now your hands are going to be directly underneath your shoulders what does that mean I'm actually reaching too much there I should have my hands directly under my shoulders at that point so my hands should be right here they shouldn't be out there and then from there you're gonna pull your lead arm across your chest notice how my hands are okay so back to the wall drill we got our rear end on the wall here okay your goal Russ oh Russ Rusty Rusty is to touch your knuckles to the wall. There's your wall. While the on the wall. By the while the butt's on the wall, you might not be able to get there. Don't move your head. Can't move your head. Oh yeah. Right. So you just go where you can go. That, yeah, just go where you can go. I mean don't 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 overdo it. You might not be able to do it. Right, right. You're not twenty years old, so we're, nobody's trying to get you there. But your posture, look how straight your back is there. That looks already much better than what I just saw on your video. Here you got, you know, what we call C posture, a little bit more rounded there. Yes. Right. So so you're where should you be? You should be top of the knees or over the balls of the feet. That's and I unlock my knees, I don't bend them. That's unlocking. I don't do this. I don't want my knees over my toes. I'm just unlocking them. My weight's directly over the center of my arches of my feet. My arms are hanging directly under my shoulders, and I should be able to touch the top of my knee with either hand. That's how much bend you should have from your forward flexion of the spine. Now, Hogan had really long arms. He had a 34-inch sleeve. I met the guy. His hands were huge. I have a 32-inch sleeve. He stood very upright. Why? Because he had long arms. My wingspan is two inches shorter than my height. That's pretty sad when you're only five foot eight. So I got to get down here lower. Now Jack, who I've met a couple of times, he's got a short wingspan for his height. So he was down here. So how you stand to the ball is based on your anatomical features. You got pretty long arms. You don't need to get down as far as I do. I mean, if you touched my nose and I tried to touch your nose, you could touch mine. I couldn't touch yours. That's my guess. All right, so given that situation, that's what I want you to work on. You're going to get the lead arm pinned against the trunk, and then you're going to work the arms down as you bump. Now, what am I bumping? I'm pushing off the ground, generating lateral movement in my lower half, and I'm dropping my hands straight down. Now, as I come into the ball, the back of my left hand is going to counterclockwise rotate and arch. The palm of my right hand is starting to rotate, and there's my impact position. Palm of my hand face the target, back of my left hand's flat. And then it rotates through. So the rate of closure of the face matches the rate of rotation of my body. Yeah, so you're working on hands down. Now, how do you do that drill at home? This is a great one. So again, we're back to the... Now, this is, this is a... We're going to imagine this is a door jam. Okay? You got your forehead on the door. You pull your lead arm across your chest. Now you got to bring your hand straight down and not hit the door jam. If you come out here, you're going to hit the door jam. So your hands have to come down inside that line I just drew. So you're going to go to the top. And once you get to the top here, your new top of your back swing is going to be about right here. You got to come down and not hit the door. So I'll demonstrate that. 